the Frisco Bowl down in Texas. This one's on Tuesday, December 19th, 9 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. It pits the UTSA Roadrunners, meet meep, of course, against the Marshall Thundering Herd. Uh, UTSA currently a 13-point favorite at BetUS, uh, total sitting at 53 right now. Uh, it appears UTSA quarterback Frank Harris is going to play in the bowl game. Uh, the only player in the portal from the Roadrunners is AAC Defensive Player of the Year, uh, edge rusher Trey Moore. Uh, the Marshall quarterback, Cam Fancher, he is in the portal. Of course, I'm sure that you all heard about the uh, the quotes from Charles Huff last week and whatnot. Uh, but he he played pretty well uh, to get the team to the bowl game. Had a three-touchdown, zero-interception effort against Arkansas State. Uh, so Cole Pennington is going to be the starting quarterback with his sterling zero touchdowns and six interceptions on the year. Uh Huff's team also got J.J. Roberts out, the safety, uh, with an injury. They got starting center uh, Trent Holler. He's in the portal. And there's a chance that the running back, Rasheen Ali, could sit out to prep for the NFL. So we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, both of these teams went 2-3 and three against the spread down the stretch. UTSA was 4-1, and one, while Marshall was 2-3. and three. Uh, Marshall, 2-4 uh, and four against the spread this season against teams with a winning record. Kyle, I'm going to start with you on this. UTSA uh, has never won a bowl game. And that is one of the reasons that Frank Harris is uh, is giving for playing in the game. He and Jeff Trailer, who is staying at UTSA, they both want to bring the first bowl win back to San Antonio. Uh, from what I'm seeing, their offense matches up really well against Marshall's defense. Uh, over the past six weeks, Marshall's defense number 118 in pass success allowed. UTSA's offense number 25. Uh, there's there's a lot on this that I see going UTSA's way. What what do you see happening in this game? Yeah, it, it's kind of a shame this line has moved so much, but, you know, UTSA has gotten a lot of sharp money here, and it makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, Marshall, I think they're almost unbettable right now. Now, obviously, Marshall could win the game, and somebody will come back and say, you know, look at look at Kyle with the dumb statement. Um, it's always possible anything can happen in college football, but I think it's really tough to bet a team like Marshall. They have tons of issues going on. Um, can you really guess that they will show up the same way that UTSA will? I wouldn't want to do so. You know, I think they have tons of chemistry issues. Buff's comments, definitely not a good look. UTSA, it feels like the ultimate motivated versus unmotivated spot here because UTSA wants this game bad. They they have to get this game. They've been so close to winning bowl games multiple times. A lot of the key guys who have been there in those other years that they came close, like last year, are still here. They get another shot. They're not that far from home. Uh, you know, I'll be honest, I did bet UTSA when it was a better price than this. I would still lean UTSA a decent amount here. Marshall, I mean, uh, Cole Pennington has not exactly been his dad, Chad Pennington, so far. Uh, this is a, a guy who has not played very well so far. Maybe he will in the future. I don't know. But UTSA's defense has improved quite a bit. I think the UTSA numbers from the beginning of the year in general won't really mean much right now because Harris was gone. The defense has improved a lot. I think UTSA. He's playing pretty well here at the end of the season. Outside of the bunch of turnovers they had versus Tulane, the UTSA has really played well to finish the season. Marshall fumbled the ball 22 times this year, guys. That's a ton of fumbles. They picked up just 31.7% of their third down conversion attempts. And Marshall's run defense, while they did stuff other teams a decent amount, explosiveness allowed is just ridiculous. Wow. Tons of big plays allowed by Marshall's run defense. And like Gary said, their pass defense isn't good either. Marshall's defense was one of the most disappointing units to me this year. They should have been better than that. I think uh, trailer still being there. UTSA against the spread is my lean. Maybe even a Marshall team total under. I, you know, I hadn't thought about the team total aspect of it. Uh, but uh, here's the thing. I could I could see a lot of garbage time points uh, potentially because I, I think UTSA could just run away with this. Parker, uh, over to you. The five factors favors UTSA big time and, uh, over the past six weeks, I mean, points per play margin uh, has got UTSA number 16 and Marshall number 120. Uh, just drastic differences here. Uh, what are your numbers showing on this one? UTSA is 11th in uh, pressure rate on defense, so been really, really disruptive. And Marshall with a new quarterback is, is an issue, but also Trent Haller, the guard being out, I think is going to disrupt that offensive line pretty substantially. He had an 84.8 pass blocking grade. That's second on the team. The big jump there, I don't I don't know if it's going to be Jalen Slappy, one funny name, or two, Altrick Barlow, funny uh, TCU commit who uh, who ended up transferring after uh, not really playing for a couple of years. Um, both of those guys are, you know, very, very few snaps, but but grades in the 50s and the 40s. So 
huge disruption to the interior offensive line, even without the edge rusher for uh, UCSA. I think they could be really, really disruptive against this Marshall offense that's that's just not really been good at anything. Last year, at least, I feel like the the run game was at least consistent enough where they could do something, and they had the um, you know maybe the, the the downfield threat now and then. But uh, they're 121st in EPA per rush this season, 106th in rushing success rate, um, and uh, I mean just 80 84th on early downs EPA. It's just really, really bad. Another thing that might help, and, and kind of where the sh- the turnovers are showing up. Another thing that might help UTSA is uh, UTSA starting field position has not been great. They're 76th overall. Marshall 132nd in starting field position allowed. A lot of that is, of course, due to turnovers by the offense. So uh, pretty rough on the offensive side of things here. Hard hard not to see a clear path for victory for for UTSA um, being able to just play a little bit more consistently and be super disruptive in that interior offensive line uh, as, as Marshall is having to do some shuffling there for the bowl game. Uh, to me, motivation is the key here, right? Uh, unless unless Marshall's defense coordinator, Jason Seymour, spent some time with Shill Wood, uh, I don't envision them being able to slow down Frank Harris and company in this one. Uh, and while the Roadrunners are certainly going to miss Trey Moore, like he wasn't a run stopper, and there's still other options available to rush the passer. I mean, you got you got the linebacker, uh, Jamal Ligon, right? Uh, I think UTSA shows out here. I, I bet it at nine and a half last week. It got steamed yesterday. I still like it so long as it's under two touchdowns. Go ahead and lock this one in for me. I will take UTSA minus 13 uh, against Marshall on this. I I think we have a blowout on our hands uh, on Tuesday evening. 